happy Monday. Uh, it's 7.40 in the morning. I've been here for about an hour. I got here at a quarter to six. Um, don't work out on Mondays because I like to come in early. And I was just hustling and bustling, getting things ready. And it appears as though the internet has gone down. It just came back. Um, it's very windy here. And so I don't know if the wind like knocked whatever you need for the internet to function down. But, um, but um, it wasn't working. And so I was just silently panicking there. So um, I only have 20 minutes now before class starts and I need to finish something. So I'm gonna finish that and then I will share with you what I was in the process of preparing for for today's lesson. So off to a smashing start today. <laughs> All right, it is now 11.20. I am officially done teaching for the day. Mondays are the shortest days in terms of time spent with students. Um, the last time I checked in, it was I think a quarter to eight and the internet had just stopped working because the wind is blowing. Um, luckily, I think while I was on camera with you guys, it came back up and then I was able to like scramble and get the stuff that I was trying to have ready to go for class ready. Um, and so I think that well that makes you start class just a little flustered where you're like getting everything back together and getting things started so the internet comes back up and then i get everything or i attempt to get everything started for my zoom session for my homeroom class zoom then crashes so kids are trying to get in class and they can't so i have to message them on google classroom to say i'm having some zoom issues just bear with me eventually we got everything started and then i start class and I'm like excited to start class because I was going to try this new um, technique with breakout rooms. Um, so as I'm getting us prepared for that, uh, I get a phone call from the assistant principal saying, hey, uh, we're ready for you in the IEP. And I'm like, I'm teaching class now. By this point, the RSP teacher had joined, but I thought he was just there because he's normally there as a support several days a week. Um, I didn't realize he was there so that I could leave. And so when I said I'm teaching class right now, they were like, oh, Mr. So-and-so is there, you can go. So then I said, okay. So I had to sit down and I had to try in a very rapid and scrambled manner, explain to him what the next steps were going to be for what I had planned. And even as I was explaining it, I knew that this is probably not gonna work out this way because we haven't had enough time to like show him how to do certain things, show him where to locate things, but I just had to leave and wish for the best. So what ended up happening is I kept the class, I. I kept the second version of me in that Zoom session on my Chromebook, so I was able to see what was going on. I just couldn't control it because I was no longer in the meeting and I wasn't the host at that point. And then I jumped in on my um, IEP, contributed what I needed to contribute, and then when my part of that meeting was done, I went back to class and I was still trying still trying to make what was supposed to happen happen but then by that point I couldn't be the host anymore he couldn't make me the host we couldn't even set up breakout rooms for some strange reason it was just a mess so um, instead of working in groups they ended up working individually on this particular assignment so what the assignment is or was supposed to be for that class but it it turned out okay was this iCivics lesson that I found so they have this whole unit on I forget what it's called politics and public policy it says down there if you can see it um, so it has a series of lessons this is the very first one where they just talk about why voting matters it gives you some step-by-step -step directions and then some student handouts um, so with the student handouts I obviously I'm trying to do all this one-handed here with the student handouts I um, downloaded it on Kami I added it to Google Classroom and so students had access to it there so on their end, this is what they have. There were four resources I provided them. The first thing that we did before we went into the discussion and the steps of the lesson from iCivics is I found a video on YouTube that talks about why voting matters. I like this one because the kids that are speaking in this video appear to be around the same age as my students. So we watched that um, and I let them know these students also are Canadian because at the end they talk about, and this is why voting is important in Canada. But the ideas and the, and the the opinions that were expressed on why voting matters were, you know, the same things you'd hear uh, young Americans say. So then we watched that. Then we did this um, through Cami, which came from iCivics. We talked about reason or 
we talked about four different categories really focusing on three so we just kind of brainstormed what we knew um, what kind of decisions do voters make um, we also talked about when where and how do people vote who can vote I told them that we were going to hold off on this because that was going to come towards the tail end of things so we just brainstormed what we already knew about voting there we did this as a whole group so I share my screen I will download a copy of this at some point today and add it to Google Classroom in case someone wasn't able to get all of these things typed in. Then we read these two paragraphs here that just talked some more about why voting matters. And then I told them they were gonna be working in breakout rooms to complete this section of the handout. So this is where the new procedures come in place with breakout rooms. So I stole this idea from Love Teach Repeat, who reposted this from another teacher, and I'll have to look up to see who it was. But this is just how she sets up breakout rooms in her class. The slide presentation looks different, but the concepts of what's in the slide is the same. So the purpose is to make sure everyone has a function while in breakout rooms, so that no one's just sitting there, muted, with their camera off, not participating in any way. So we have some agreements. In a perfect world, we would have come up with these together, but I didn't have time for that and I really wanted to just get into this. So I just stole the ones that she used. They were good ones, be engaged, stay on topic, be supportive, cameras need to be on. I don't want chat discussion um, and listening, listening respectfully. Obviously there's flexibility with these if there's some circumstances that require a student to have their camera off or there's a reason why a student is communicating through chat. Um, but just generally speaking, those are the expectations. These were the roles process checker, timekeeper, leader, recorder, representative, and fact checker. And um, I will try and link this presentation in the, uh, in the comment or in the description box, I should say, in case you want to see it. Or I'll link the, the actual Instagram account that I got these from. And then their task list, like this is what they needed to accomplish while in the breakout room so they were going to be going to this website that is linked on the lesson plan itself select the state of california and use the information found here to answer these questions um, once they got those questions answered we'll come together as a group discuss and make sure we all have the right answers and then the last thing that they do is give three to five reasons why voting is important and that is really the end of that particular lesson there is an extension where they can create a poster um, or a flyer to share that talks about um, how voting works in their state if I had started this earlier I would have included that because I just signed up for the Canva for Educators account and that would have been a perfect opportunity to use that but we're short on time or I started this later um, or too late to include that so I'm not doing that. So needless to say with all that going on the song that I played this morning to get class started was Manic Monday because it is or it was a Manic Monday morning with the wind blowing the internet going down surprise you do need to be in this IEP um, but it all worked out so in my switch class we were able to go through those steps a little bit more defined the way that I wanted to um, we'll just have to finish it tomorrow because they didn't have a ton of time in their group since we only have about 50 an hour together on Mondays. So it's 11.28. I am now getting ready to go to a PLC meeting and then I have another meeting after that and then the day is mine to work on what I need to work on. So I will probably check in with you towards the end of the day. Perfect. Tuesday. It's 5 at 19. Um, I'm getting ready to leave. I didn't vlog all day with the exception of think I think I took some footage on the way to work because I had a lot to do today and I needed to stay focused. 
so that's what I did. So Tuesdays are one of my favorite days of the week because um, on Tuesdays, my first class starts at nine. So I have prep in the morning. I get here usually around 7.30, so I have like a good hour and a half before I teach students. So it's a good time for me to get some work done. I am working on being more efficient with my time. So I have like this top three list of things that I've been working on for the past couple of days because I have not been able to accomplish um, finishing them just yet because you know um, and so the top three things are I need to grade some articles of the week I'm almost done with that I need to integrate from Google Google Classroom and I'll do that when I finish um, with the articles of the week and then I have a bunch of stories to read and I need to order a dress for a wedding I'm going to be attending soon. Um, so I wanted to get through as much of that as I can. So I've just been working on articles of the week today, plus teaching and prepping for tomorrow. So I just finished prepping for tomorrow. And before I tell you what I did today and how the day went, I wanted to tell you about something that I've been using for a about it has to be about a month now um that it has been a really good asset to my virtual teaching so the first thing that i got like tech wise that has been very helpful is the webcam from amazon um but logitech reached out and said hey we have several different resources that may be of assistance to you in this virtual setting take a look let us know what you what we what you would like to try excuse me and let us know so i was like uh okay so what i chose was this little thing here it is the snowball ice microphone it has like a longer name but it's something like snowball black ice um usb plug and play microphone something like that so i started using this or tried it out really for the first time my week of parent teacher conferences and the reason why i chose that particular item is because early on with virtual learning i felt like i had kids saying that they couldn't really hear or the audio was low but i couldn't change anything on my end and so that was when i saw that i was like that's what i want to try um what I really like about it is it literally, literally took me about four minutes to set up. When it says plug and play, it really was just plug and play. So I unboxed it. I think I had to put the little stand and screw that into the round part, plug it into my computer, which it's plugged in right over here. And the computer recognized it right away and it was ready to go. And um, a couple questions I had about it at first that have since been resolved, because I was like, well, do I turn it on and off? Does it just turn on and off? But it comes on and off as you turn your computer on and off. So when I log off and leave today and shut the computer down, it will shut itself off. And then when I come in the next morning, it'll turn itself on. And then the volume is adjustable. So if I wanted to increase the volume of the microphone itself, I am able to do that by just playing with the settings on the desktop computer itself. I will say, since using it I've gotten several compliments on my audio quality from students as well as aides as well as parents so it's definitely worth something looking into if you feel like your audio quality is lacking for your students or you have students saying I can't really hear you highly 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 recommend it and it amplifies the audio when I'm doing things like playing um, video or music because I start my class with music every morning and so that just kind of enhances the experience. So I've been using it for about a month. I have no complaints. Um, super easy. I don't need anything very complicated. So when I saw plug and play, that was right up my alley because I don't like I don't like figuring things out when it comes to technology. It makes me it makes me tired. Um, so yeah, so that is what I've been using. I definitely wanted to share that with you guys. Now, as far as what we've been doing today um, and yesterday, we have been doing iCivic. So I just have to remind myself, it's okay that we're taking a little bit of a pause with language arts because I really want these iCivics lessons to stay on track so that we're ready to go come election day. And today we talked about the electoral process. Um, we talked about the difference between caucuses and primaries, what someone has to do when they decide to they want to run for president um we looked at a few political cartoons and this all came 
from the lesson plan with the iCivics. Like I just followed this here. I made a couple of adjustments. Um, and the kids were really engaged in both classes. One of the things that I liked that I did, this was not a part of the lesson, what they suggested that you do to start was just kind of talk to students about what they remember on the last election day. And because my kids were probably nine um, on the last election day, I just assumed that they don't really remember it or they really weren't paying that close of attention to it. So I started off by just showing them this video clip that um, shows like the tail end of election night and just how news reports will look on election day. So I played this. CNN now projects that Donald Trump will carry the state of Wisconsin, even in Wisconsin. And the reason why I wanted to show this video is because they get to see images of like the big map that we always see on election night. And then if you look here, there's the breakdown of the electoral votes because that was going to be a big part of this lesson. So we talked about that. Um, went through the resources with iCivics and um, then with my homeroom class, we haven't gotten there with Switch. We're gonna have to finish um, tomorrow. After we watched that video, read through some of the pieces that are provided with iCivics that goes over caucuses, primaries, the steps to becoming president, how they uh, get the word out about their campaign, raising money and all that. Then I showed them a video I found on YouTube that talks about the electoral college and explains to them, because part of the reading explains that it is possible for a candidate to have the majority of the popular vote, and they explain what that is, and still not become president because they didn't have enough electoral votes or they didn't hit that 270 first. Um, so we watched that video and then there were some activities that we were or that they were working on together in their breakout rooms. So I'm trying the same strategy that I showed you guys yesterday, putting them in those breakout rooms, giving them a task list, jobs to do. There's still some work to be done with some groups and each day that we've tried it so far, this is the second day, we've just been super short on time so it was kind of rushed. So hopefully we get to the point where they have more time together and I can kind of see how it works. The first thing that I learned yesterday is that I gotta make sure when I share that Google Slides presentation that everyone's just functioning off the same presentation so that I can see what they're doing on the slide. And the only thing I really wanna see that they're doing on their slide is assigning group roles. So that was the focus today. Tomorrow, the next lesson in iCivics is going to talk specifically about like the act of running for president, like campaigning, fundraising, making appearances. And there's this game that they have on iCivics that I just played with for a little while. And I'm actually gonna give them time in class to play it tomorrow um, because it's educational and it'll give me a little bit of a break if I were to be totally honest. So I'm getting ready to go home now. I have dinner to cook and papers to grade, and I don't know if I told you, but I'm wearing a hat today because it's Red Ribbon Week, and the theme is, okay, here we go. The theme for today was outsmart drugs, use your head, students will wear a cap or a hat. So, um, that's it. I'm gonna head out and take care of some business at home, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Hi, it's Thursday. I meant to vlog yesterday, but my cat, my cattery, my battery was dead. And as soon as I picked up the camera and turned it on, it turned itself right off. So I didn't get to vlog. Um, but here I am today. I wanted to share two iCivics resources. Well, yeah, I'm just sharing two iCivics resources in this particular clip. I think I mentioned earlier that primarily we've just been doing iCivics lessons all week in preparation for election day next week so we've done very little language arts but at the same time we've done a lot of informational text or a lot of reading of informational text so there is still some language arts there it's just hidden under the guise of social studies so um the first day we talked about why voting matters we talked about the electoral process um, i feel like they have a good general sense of things like popular vote versus the electoral college primaries caucuses when election day is inauguration day and that's all thanks to the lessons that i've just been going through here on iCivics yesterday they literally just got to play a game and they really really liked it um it's called win the white house 
And so I told them that you get to play a game for class today. The game is approximately, or they approximate that it should take them about 30 minutes to play. And they literally go through all the steps of campaigning and running for president. And at the end, they find out if they ran a successful campaign and end up becoming president. So I gave them yesterday and they have today. It's not due until today to play. So they get to pick their issues. They can get to pick their slogan. They get to pick a running mate. Um, they get to decide what states they're going to go to, what activities they're going to have there. And all of those things add up to points. Um, and I've, I haven't been able to play the full game, but I don't know if the points are getting them to 270 or it's just like points in general. And then based on how that goes, they are either elected president or they are defeated. So this morning I asked if anyone had finished and said, who's president? And there were quite a few kids and they really had like legit smiles on their faces. They had fun. Some of them said they had fun. You can tell they had fun. So it was great. So I'm really glad I used that. So for accountability's sake, so that I knew that they weren't just playing, but they had some learning to show. There were questions that iCivics has at the very beginning that are just kind of to see what you know. And that's under, I don't know what the proper phrase is, but it's like in beta format, like they're still testing it out. And I think there's questions at the end. So I linked the game here, but then they also had to complete this Google form. So you can see 17 out of the eight, out of 17 students out of class have turned this in, 18 more still need to do so. So when they finish, they fill out this form that I created and they put their name, homeroom or switch, what was their campaign slogan, what five issues did they select to run on because they had to choose at least five issues. They pick one and explain in three sentences why they chose that as one of, the, one of their campaign issues, who their running mate was, and then the results of the election. A brief summary explaining the results, if they were successful, why do they think they were successful, if they lost, what mistakes do you think they made. So we also asked people that lost. And so some people raised their hand and I said, what do you think happened? Like, where did you go wrong? So some of them said, I focused on the wrong states. I didn't visit those larger states. So I like it. It was really fun. To, today we learned about ballots, excuse me, like the different kinds of ballots, what they look like. Someone in the session happened to have her older brother around and was able to show what his real actual ballot looked like. They learned about referendums, initiatives, and um, that people in public office can also be recalled and what the process is for that. And then they answered some questions. Um, they had to put the steps to taking an initiative and getting it on a ballot in order. And then they had to decide whether they thought the ability to recall someone from public office was a good thing or a bad thing based on the information they learned. Um, and then the rest of the day they had Starbucks mode time. Like they have things that they need to work on um, because the trimester is ending. And then I have things that I'm grading. So it was kind of nice. Um, and then tomorrow, well, I won't show you what they're going to do tomorrow because I'll show you that tomorrow. But I just uh, looked up the next lesson that I chose for iCivics is another game. And the premise of this game is now they're voting in the, I think they're voting in the primaries. It is. Um, they're voting in the primaries. So I am really happy with iCivics. I also got in the mail, I shared this on Instagram yesterday. A couple of days ago, I got this box from Little Justice Leaders that goes right in line with what we're doing. They give you some resources, and this month's focus is on, um, here's a little card here. This month's theme or focus is on voting rights and voter suppression. So they give you this card. They tell you how to use the box on the back. There's a couple of other resources in here they have for you, like little cards where they tell you some conversation starters you could have. Where did I put those? Is it in here? Here they are. So there are also these cards that give you conversation starters, um, a little spotlight on some information, additional teaching resources, and this book was also included. History Smashers, that. So um, that was exciting. I haven't been able to use this yet because I've just gotten it, but I definitely know that it is something that I'd like to incorporate in the next few days. Um, what else? I think that's it. The craziest thing that happened to me is I had um, a parent insinuate that I communicate too much. Um, and I don't really communicate that much. Like I don't even send a message every day. I might send them a couple of times a week. It really is just 
based on whether or not there's a piece of information I would want to know if I were a parent or that I think is kind of critical for them. And so sometimes they get a couple a week and sometimes they may get a little bit more. But that just goes to show, like I said last week, you cannot make everybody happy. Um, so we need to stop killing ourselves trying to do that and just do what we know is right and correct and professional. And in the process, uh, set boundaries for ourselves, take care of ourselves, take care of our physical and mental health because no one is really as invested in us being healthy as we are. So um, I just, I when I found that out, I kind of chuckled because I, that is the last thing I was expecting any parent to have an issue with. Like I've never heard of that before. Um, so I don't even know, I don't even know what else to say. I just was like shocked. But that happened and I think that's pretty, pretty much it. The trimester ends tomorrow. Uh, I have to finalize my grades by next week, so I will be grading, grading, grading. Tomorrow, um, for Red Ribbon Week, today was red, white, and blue days. So have on a blue sweater. Red shoes are on my feet. I have a red face mask somewhere. And then tomorrow, we're dressing up for Halloween. So tomorrow, I'm going to have a little competition with my class. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to dress up as, but I'll show you tomorrow. So... It's four o'clock, I'm gonna head out. I have an appointment I need to get to. And then I need to go home and continue to grade. So, that's it. See you tomorrow. Good morning. <laughs> it's about uh, 6.50 on Friday, October the 30th. Um, I'm going to work early so that I can have my weekend to myself, which is also why it's dark in the car and I am vlogging with this light in my car on. So the lighting is bad because it's dark outside. Not much I can do about it, but I wanted to vlog on the way to work to save time really. So um, this is my Halloween costume. Can anybody guess who I am? Um, hopefully you realize that I'm supposed to be Ruth Bader Ginsburg. So, uh, what I'm going to do, uh, just for the fun part of the day, and that's all I really intended to share, is I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start class with my screen turned off, and I'm going to put them in groups, just random groups, um, and I'm going to give them like time to formulate some questions. So I'm gonna limit them to 10 questions. Um, I'm gonna limit them to yes or no questions, and I'm gonna make sure that they know that when we come out of those groups and they start asking the questions, no matter what group they're in, they need to like take note of the responses to the questions because that will help them be more successful in guessing. Uh, so the winner, or, or the group that wins, or the group that guesses, will get a pass for an assignment from either my class or my partner's class, and she's going to do the same thing with her homeroom class, which is my switch class. Um, we can't repeat the process with both of our classes because, you know, once I do this with my homeroom class and that class ends, someone in my homeroom class is going to tell a friend in their switch class and then people would be at an advantage because they had a friend that told them. So we're both just doing it with our homeroom classes and giving them a pass that they could use in either class. Then I'm also going to have just an individual uh, costume contest for kids that choose to participate. So I think I'm gonna, you know, make the groups random, but I do think I'm still gonna formalize the groups and give them like a task list, like a person that's supposed to record so that they can keep track of um, like what my responses were and what the questions were. And then after the 10 questions are asked, then I'm gonna put them back in their uh, breakout rooms and let them kind of put all the pieces together and see if they can come up with the guess. Now, if no one, if no group gets it, then I guess no group gets the pass, really. Um, so I'm just gonna emphasize how important it is that they listen to the answers um, and formulate really good questions uh, and think about the questions they wanna ask. So that's the plan for that. As far as what's on the agenda today, the rest is just like normal stuff. Um, they are going to play an iCivics game called Cast Your Vote. So they're voting in the primaries and um, I'm just gonna give them some background information on the town that they are residents of, 
give them, um, cause what I was able to find with this game, which I'm sure existed with the other game, are just the directions, like game guides. It's really for the teacher, but it has good information for the students. Just kind of orient them to the game, um, show them the fact sheet about the town, and have them play. Like this game takes a, a little bit longer. It's approximated that it'll take 30 minutes plus. Um, and then they have some activity sheets that they do afterwards for accountability purposes. So aside from that, the other reason why I'm here early, I don't know if I said that at all, is because I need to get the rest of these stories graded. So the trimester ends today, which means our grades need to be finalized on, I think, Tuesday of next week. I've read one set of stories for my homeroom class, um, which was their extended writing project for Study Sync. And now I need to read the ones for my Switch class. And grading stories is just one of the hardest things to grade for like a variety of reasons. It's just time consuming and trying to figure out what's happening in stories sometimes is a challenge and giving some feedback. So I wanna get a head start on that so that when I leave here today, once again, I'm not leaving here to do any work at home over the weekend. So my goal is to get everything graded and then to um, upload grades really from Google Classroom and then finalize everything next Monday and Tuesday. So perfect timing. I just got to work. Talk to you. All right, so my kids are in a breakout room. It's just me and me. Uh, we just finished their first round of questioning. I made some slight changes. Um, I allowed them to ask a total of 12, or I'm going to allow them to ask a total of 12 questions. There are six groups, and that gives every group the ability to ask two questions. So we just went through the first six questions from the six groups, like each group asked one. And I realized after answering the last question, they may need time to now go back and maybe adjust their second question. Because the last question I was asked was pretty um, like good because they wanted to know first, is my, they said, is your character from the past? And I had them define character, so they clarified, is your person, because they now know I'm a person from the past. And then I had them define past, and they said, are you alive? Are you still alive? And I said, no. So then I realized they probably need to go back and discuss and look at their second question. So that's what they're doing. I'm getting ready to bring them back. All right, it's Friday. It is, obviously it's Friday. It's still Friday. It's about 5.30. I was actually getting ready to go home, but then I realized I forgot to kind of wrap up the day and show you one of the main things I wanted to show you today um, from iCivics, because I've really enjoyed using that resource all week, and this video is not sponsored or anything like that. So I just legitimately joy enjoyed the lessons that I shared with students. First, as far as the guess who or what Miss Robinson is, um, I feel like that was a success. We actually had fun. I think I took a little footage of me waiting for them in their breakout rooms while they were getting their second question together. So in my homeroom class, um, they asked a very good series of questions and giving them the chance to reevaluate their second question after hearing the first round of information I think was the key. So six groups in total, five out of the six groups um, were able to correctly guess who I was. The first group thought I was Rosa Parks, which is not a terrible guess because it was kind of like in the same line of the questions that they asked me. And then um, with my switch class, I wasn't going to do it with them, but then I decided to because I had such a good time with uh, my first class. Uh, but I asked in the chat at first if they knew who I was because I know the kids talk and so I was just curious to see if someone in my homeroom class had communicated with someone in my switch class um, and one girl typed in the chat to everyone that she knew who i was and then she put that i was ruth bader ginsburg in the chat but not everybody reads the chat and not everybody was in class at that time because this, this was at the very beginning of class so then i asked them again verbally because my camera i kept my camera off just in case if they knew um a good chunk of the class said that they didn't um i don't know if i really well i guess they didn't like some of them i really think they didn't but i think some of the kids that said that they didn't really knew but they weren't telling me that so the kids that fessed up to saying yeah I know who you are for whatever reason whether they read the chat or someone told them um, I didn't have them join a group to kind of come up with some questions and so we played another round there were no prizes at the or there was not the prize of having a, an assignment pass at the end it was just for fun and um, the people that didn't know I don't think they really knew like they thought 
they guessed that I was dressed up as Barbie because they know that I'm obsessed with that Instagram account. One group thought I was Michelle Obama. And so I just talked to them. I was like, guys, I'll probably never, as much as I love her, I'll probably never dress up as Michelle Obama because if I were to dress up like her for Halloween, it would be very hard for people to know who I'm trying to be um, because Michelle Obama is a well-dressed black woman. Like that's about as much as you can like project physically. And I mean, I'm not the best dressed, but I think I can put an outfit together. So if I put on a suit or something or a nice dress, no one's really gonna know what I'm doing. They may just think that I decided to wear a nice dress that day or a suit. So I said, I would just basically look like myself. And so they were like, you know what, that's kind of true. And they kind of laughed about it. So that went really well. I'm glad I did it. It felt like something that was fun, but also like built some critical thinking skills. So it was a win-win for me. As far as the iCivics activity we did today, I had them play a game called Cast Your Vote. And, um, and so I just kind of oriented them to the game. I showed them everything that they needed to do. And so what I shared with them were, one of them was actually a teacher resource. So I showed them the game guide that is really meant for the teachers, but I thought it was something good for them to have just to show them how to navigate through the game because I just kind of figured it out on my own as I was playing. Um, so it lets them know what they're gonna do first, second, third, so they fill out a they fill out a ballot in the very beginning and they don't know any information. And so the purpose of that is letting them know you should never really cast your vote without knowing anything about the candidates. Um, then they go to a town hall meeting where they're able to hear some candidates respond and then they progress throughout the game. And so most of the game takes place um, in, the, in this bedroom. So they look on the computer, sometimes they have an email, sometimes they have a new app that's added. So like one of the apps that they'll get is a research app so they can look up candidates and some information. They record all of their notes on their little phone. I think they show an image of the phone. Um, right here, they record notes on the phone. Um, so that when it comes time toward the end of the game for them to vote, they are making an informed decision. So that's how they spent their day to day. Um, they also knew, oh, if the door is open, they have somewhere to go. So that tells them you need to go to a town hall meeting. They have this little calendar there that gave them a list of things going on. So I thought that was really cute. And then it gives you some of the issues that the town of Isley is facing. So I explained that the town of Isley is a fictional town. These are some of the issues that they're currently dealing with. So I showed them that to get them ready for the game. And then the other thing that I shared is this fact sheet. So we read through this and the information sounds very realistic. So even though I told them it was a fictional town, some people were like, wait, is this real? Like, is this a real place? And I was like, no, it's fictional. So it gives them like the ethnic, uh, ethnic breakdown, excuse me, of the community, um, how the government is set up, um, some history of it, and then some fun facts and some of the issues that they're um, currently facing. So. That was how they spent their day today. While they were doing that, I was trying to get some grading done. I did finish grading all the stories for both classes with the exception of maybe a couple that were submitted a little bit later. Um, and that's pretty much how we ended the day. Like this is the end of my first trimester. So I have been teaching virtually now for 12 weeks. Um, at the end of this first trimester, I do have a lot of thoughts, a lot of reflections. Um, I don't know when it's gonna end. I think students that are classified as special ed, I think I just heard will be back on campus within the next couple of weeks, but that's a very small population of our campus. Um, but it's been an interesting 12 weeks. I feel like there's been a lot of growth for me personally over the last 12 weeks. Um, and just a lot of like insights on how I function as a teacher and what's healthy and what's not. And insights on how parents parent and how parents react and how that also affects how their child reacts to situations that are not optimal or not what we what we would want. So I'm kind of thinking about doing like a sit down video about my reflections on teaching virtually for a trimester. I'm not sure, but um, I can at least say I survived the first trimester. I've done 12 weeks and Monday starts a new trimester. So all in all, I would say it's a good day. Um, had fun and now I'm gonna go home, 
do some more work until I get to the point where I feel comfortable just shutting it off for the day and shutting it off for the weekend. So that's really all I have to say. I hope that you guys enjoyed this week's vlog. Um, if you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, any comments, go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. I always say this and I know I forget quite often, but I'm gonna try to remember to link the iCivics lessons that I used um, in the description box. If you're looking for something quick, um, my kids really did enjoy playing the Win the White House game, and I saw that they do have options for elementary school, middle school, and high school. Um, oh, and then the other thing with this game, after they played for a little while, I asked them to tell me about some candidates that stood out to them for good or bad reasons. So they were like, well, this candidate has been arrested eight times for this, and this candidate has this going on. So um, one student said, like, I just get more confused with the research because they all have like things about them that I don't really like. And I said, yes, that is very similar to real life. No candidate is going to be perfect. Um, and sometimes people feel like they're choosing between the lesser of two evils. So if that's how you're feeling, that's a very uh, real reflection of how a lot of people feel when they vote. Like you're really having to look at people and thinking about who you feel like you can trust the most based on what you know about each individual. So that was fun. But that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. If you did, give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. And I will be sure to see you guys in the next one. So until then, goodbye.